So in this video, we're going to learn how to do some simple reverse engineering on Windows. We're going to decompile an executable and see how it works. And then what we're going to do is we're going to modify one of the instructions in the executable to change the behavior of the app. So of course, we're not going to do this on any commercial software, but I've made a simple app for this series that we can modify and uh, decompile. So the app I've made looks like this. It says my app and it says locked. If we click unlock, it says invalid code. The unlock code you supplied is not valid. Uh, that's if I didn't type anything in. If I type anything in that's invalid, like that, and then I click unlock, it's gonna say that the code was invalid. So what I'm gonna do now is put in a valid code so you can see what it looks like whenever the code is valid. So this is the valid code. Uh, this is the one that the program has been programmed to accept. And what we're gonna do is click unlock. You can see that the uh, text box and the button automatically disappear and then the label changes to unlocked. So what we're gonna do is reverse engineer this simple app so that it accepts anything we type into this text box. So before we do that, I'm gonna show you the source code of that app. So here's the app here. If I go to form1.cs, that's the form that I used to create the app. Uh, and as you can see, all it is, is we declare an array of strings called unlock codes. We have a list of available unlock codes. These are the only codes that are acceptable. We scroll down to the unlock button underscore click, which is this event here when we double click on that button. We run a method called unlock app and the unlock app method loops through all of the unlock codes and it checks if each unlock code is equal to the value in the text box. If it is, we say it's unlocked. We exit the function and we turn off the text box and the button. Otherwise, we display this message to the user saying that their code was invalid. So that's all it is. It's a very simple program. It's pretty much identical to the Mac version in the other video. Only we're using C Sharp instead of Swift. So now what we need to do is we need to download the software we're going to use to look inside the app. So the first piece of software that might be useful for reverse engineering is called strings. If you've ever used that on a Mac, on a Mac there's a command called strings. And when we run that, it will show us all of these strings in the program. So if we download strings, and we'll just extract it. So we'll copy that to our desktop. We only want strings, we don't want string 64, because the app we're gonna be messing about with has a 32-bit binary, not a 64-bit one. Uh, so the assembly code will be a lot different in the 64-bit binary. So what I'm gonna do is open the command line. I'm gonna search for it. Hit enter and there we go. Now I'm gonna CD to the desktop so we can access the strings program. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to my app. You can see there's the Visual Studio solution. We're gonna go into the folder, my app. We're gonna go into the bin folder, which holds our binaries. And we're gonna to go to the release folder and then we can see our executable. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in strings, space, and then we're going to drag in the executable. and then we're gonna hit enter. So what we just saw is every string in the app printed out. So what we're gonna do is just scroll up and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a quick look through the strings to see anything we recognize. So you can see straight away, there's the string that says unlock button. We can see unlock app, we can see my app, we can see some stuff we actually recognize. If we keep scrolling, we can see more stuff we recognize. We can see invalid code, the unlock code you supplied is not valid. We can see the word unlocked and we can actually see the three strings that we have that are valid to our program. So automatically, we wouldn't even need to reverse engineer it. We could just try these three strings to see if they worked. And sure enough, they would all work. But real world programs aren't gonna be that obvious. But looking at the strings is still useful because what it does is it shows us some of the methods we wanna use. You can see there's the word unlock codes. And if we scroll up again, we can see unlock button click, which is a method that we used. We can see unlock app, which is another method. So we can see methods that are used in our program but we can't actually do anything with this. So now that we've seen a couple of methods, what we can do is we can use another program called ILSpy. It's a .NET decompiler. .NET is used by the majority of Windows programs and any program written in .NET can be disassembled and decompiled using ILSpy. So what we wanna do is download it. We wanna download the binaries and you can see there's the binary downloading now. And we also wanna download something called Reflexil. What it is, is it's a .NET assembly editor. ILSpy will let us look at the functions, but Re Reflexil will let us modify them. So we can click download there. It takes us to GitHub. And we can download Reflexil for ILSpy2.1.bin.zip. And there we have the two files downloaded. I've already downloaded them earlier, and I have them here in the ILSpy folder. 
So what you want to do is you want to extract ILSPY to a folder and then you want to extract Reflexil to a folder and you want to drag the contents of the Reflexil folder into the ILSPY folder. That's why this is here. You can see we have loads of Reflexil files in the same folder as ILSPY. And then what you want to do is open ILSPY. You want to go to the one that says application, not the one that says XML configuration, even though it says ILSPY.exe. You want to open up ILSPY and you can see here it is here. Now what I want to do is open up my app. So I want to go to open. I want to go to my app, I want to open this folder, open the bin folder, open the release folder and I want to click on my app which is our exe. I want to click open and there we can see my app. Since it was written in C sharp and it was written using .NET we can open it up in ILSPY and it can decompile all the functions. So if I go to my app and then I go to form 1 which is what we created in Visual Studio. You can see it looks extremely similar to the uh, Visual Studio code, it's virtually identical. And you can see this is where we're comparing the value in the text box to one of the values in the array. So essentially what this if statement is saying is if the value in the text box is equal to any value in the array, then we're going to set unlocked and we're going to let the user in. So essentially what we want to do is just flip this if statement to make it a not equals instead of an equals. And by doing that, what we'll do is allow anything to be typed into the text box and whenever the user clicks unlock, it will accept that as a valid code. So to do that, what we want to do is click on this plus beside form one. We want to scroll down and we want to look for our unlock app method. That's this method here, and we can see it here. So to modify this method, what we want to do is click on it here, and we want to click on this cog icon, and we'll scroll down a wee bit, and here is the line we want to change. It's this equals. So we want to look through the instructions, and we keep scrolling, we keep scrolling. You can see here, we're getting the get text, which is this one here. We're getting the text out of the text box. And then you can see here, we have this op equality. This is actually the operation that's doing the comparison. So what we want to do is we want to edit that. So we want to right click on it and we want to click edit. And you can see the operand is the op equality. We want to change that to inequality because we want to invert it. So we want to scroll through this list of methods, but as you can see, it's directly below equality, as you would probably expect. And we want to click on op inequality and click OK. Click update. And you can see here what we've just done is updated that method. Now what we want to do is right click and say update IL object model. We want to scroll down here and as you can see what we've just done is convert this equals equals into a not equals. And that's exactly what we want. And now what we want to do is just close that and we want to export our binary. So what we want to do is we want to go to the my app right here at the top this thing with the blue icon beside it. We want to right click on it and you can see here are all the reflex or methods that were added in. And what we want to do is we want to click save as. This allows us to save it as a .exe and we're going to save it as myapp.patched. And there we have it, our app was just saved and now it'll accept anything we give it as a valid code. So what we want to do is go back to our folder. So you can see here's my app and here's myapp.patched. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up myapp.patched and what we'll do is we'll just type in nothing and we'll click unlock. And as you can see the program has just unlocked. That's when we run myapp.patched. When we run my app, which is the original unpatched version, it says invalid code. Because essentially what we did was convert this double equals into a not equals and it invalidated everything. So our validation is completely gone. And now if I type in that same code, the valid code, it also works in the patched version of the program. And once again, I'll type it one more time and I'll try to type anything I want. And I'll click unlock and you can see the program has been unlocked. So that's a quick overview of how to really easily modify and reverse engineer a tiny program on Windows. For this method to work, your, your app has to have been written using .NET, otherwise it won't actually be able to decompile it with this program. Hopefully you find that interesting and you learned something and that's it for this video. If you haven't seen the Mac version, uh, you can go over and look at that now. We use a virtually identical program but we use slightly different techniques to patch it because we're using a Mac as opposed to a PC. So you can go and watch that if you're interested. There's links in the description to all of the programs that we used to actually patch this program and to view its source code and decompile it and things like that in the description. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook, that's also in the description. And we're also on Twitter now as well, and that's in the description too. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, favourite and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.